Hey, what's up, YouTube Nation? Getting ready to make an accuracy report on the Beretta ARX 22 long rifle. I had a couple EOTechs laying around, so I decided to mount an EOTech on this and uh, go from there. I've uh, come to realize there are a lot of frustrations shooting a 22 uh, rifle. One of the major uh, <clears throat> headaches uh, that I've had with this gun is, you know, I set the EOTech up at a 50 yard zero, and that's fine uh, to put an EOTech on an AR, uh, and you'll have a pretty flat trajectory from zero to 100 yards. But I realized with a 22, I put a 50 yard zero on this, and shooting at 100 yards, this thing dropped like a rock. It dropped seven inches from 50 to 100 yards. Now I did my homework, which I promised to do, because I'm going to give you guys a good accuracy report on this gun. And what I mean by that is I went out of my way to test different ammo on this gun to come up with the best recipe to shoot some tight groups with this thing. Now that being said, uh, I didn't have to go to the uh, most expensive stuff, the 30 bucks a box stuff to make this gun perform right. So, uh, but I was frustrated with the drop uh, that this gun created from 50 to 100 yards. Then when you take it into seven yards, like if you want to perform some drills up close and personal, uh, personal at seven, 15, 25 yards, this EOTech's not the answer. So I did my homework, and here's what I come up with to straighten all them problems out. Okay, guys, what did I want to accomplish? Well, I wanted to be able to go 7 yards, 15 yards, 25 yards, 50 yards, 100 yards, 150, 200 with this 22, and just dial in that zone and be dead nuts zero. Well, after doing some uh, serious research, I came up with this Vortex Razor HD Generation 2 scope. Now guys, this may seem a little eccentric to you, but I love this scope. I absolutely love it. Right now, the way I have it dialed in, I've got a dope sheet here that uh, in essence lets me, this thing's got 50 graduations on the top dial and they're half inch graduations which enables me to simply, if I'm at 15 yards, there's just 15 numbers on there. You just dial the number you have set at 15, the number you have set at 50. And the repeatability of this scope is amazing. What I mean by that is I've checked, I've checked this out extensively with this scope. Is I, I dial from 100, I can go back to 7 yards, I can dial 100, and this thing stays dead nuts zeroed. A little eccentric, a little expensive, but they make a uh, less expensive version. The reason why I spend the big bucks, because I still like to do up close and personal drills at 7 and 15 yards. And this scope best gives me the EOTech effect where I can shoot with both eyes open, make quick transitions between targets. And uh, that's for another video, and I might do one uh, on the ability of this scope to do what I, says it, uh, I say it will do. But right now, uh, let's get back to the accuracy report. Again, I did my homework. I'm going to let you guys know. Maybe I've saved you some time and trouble. It doesn't shoot the cheap ammo worth of shit, and most guns don't. So if you see this video and see some impressive groups from a 22, and you can't duplicate it, uh, get rid of that 555 crap and go buy what I'm going to tell you to buy. Right now, I'm going to go to the range. Uh, we're going to do the 25-yard line, and we're going to go from there. I'll be back. One more note before I go to the range is I'm actually going to take this off <clears throat> with the accuracy reports. I'm going to put a scope on it. I got a cheapy Redfield 6x18 scope that I'm going to put on it. And I know at first everybody's going to say, well, if you love this scope so much, why are you putting a regular scope on it? Well, <clears throat> I think I've mentioned in quite a few of my uh, videos that the eyes are starting to let me down. I'm at the age where the eyes are starting to go, guys. So... I want uh, every opportunity to show you guys the accuracy of this rifle. So to get the best repeatable sight picture from 0 to 100, I'm going to use the scope to do it. Okay, we got the ARX 160 22 long rifle at 25 yards.
Okay, guys, we got the Beretta ARX 160 22 long rifle at 50 yards. Okay, we got the Beretta ARX 160 22 long rifle. Uh, we got her set up for 100 yards. I'm going to take the camera down to the 100 yard mark so we can see the hits. And we're going to see how good this gun's going to shoot. Okay, there you go, guys. Uh, you have no idea how impressed I am with this Beretta 22 uh, long rifle. I really didn't know what to expect when I invested in this uh, in the Sig 522 and this Beretta ARX 160. I really didn't expect that much, uh, to be honest with you. But uh, here's what I did for sure. I know enough about 22s that, uh, number one, they're ammo sensitive. So I spent a lot of time and I used zero cheap ammo. I just wasn't about to uh, go about it that way. I wanted to drain the best accuracy I could out of this rifle and when I do the SIG 522. And by spending time, I came up with a load. And it wasn't the 30 bucks a box stuff, which is good news for all of us, but uh, it's not the cheap stuff either. The other thing I wanted to do was come up with the conditions, the right conditions. I know how sensitive 22s are to wind and crosswinds and the whole nine yards. So I waited to do the uh, accuracy test in light wind conditions. The range that I use is real close to the shores of Lake Erie. In fact, the range is probably less than a mile from the shores of Lake Erie. And it's rarely, uh, especially at this time of year, that I don't get some serious crosswinds. And if you look at the, the way our range is designed, there's a lot of funneling where the wind goes around that range. So I picked mornings uh, that were fairly calm and uh, I'm still a little disappointed in that 100 yard group because basically I had about a 7 to 8 mile an hour 45 degree crosswind in my face and I really think this gun even though the best group uh, that one group was an inch and 16th I think in a dead calm condition and maybe if I throw my 12 by 42 night force scope on there I might be, I think I can get this gun to shoot under an inch that might be another video but hey guys, if you don't have one, I would seriously think about one. And I'm going to show you right now uh, a cheaper alternative uh, than that $1,400 uh, Vortex Gen 2.
Okay guys, I don't want to turn this into a scope review, but this is the Vortex Viper 1x4 that I have mounted on my SIG 522. It'll do everything that the Razor does. Razor has a little nicer glass to it, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with the glass on this scope. Uh, the only thing that the Razor does over this, and I think what, uh, what makes it so darn expensive, is the glass is nicer. And the eye box is tremendous on that on that razor. Uh, shooting with both eyes open is equally as good as with an EOTech, and that's what I love about that scope. That's why I spent the big bucks on it. But this is a uh, $499 alternative to the $1399 razor. I think you guys would love this scope on a 22. If you want to accomplish what I want, wanted to accomplish and dead nuts zero all distances with a 22, this could be a great alternative for you. Hey guys, I almost forgot about this, but here's the recipe I used to shoot those groups. SK 22 long rifle rifle match. Uh, I was I bought this by the brick. I bought about this thing shot so well in my Anschutz. Uh, my Anschutz uh, is a one hole quarter inch gun depending on wind conditions that I tried it in both the Beretta and the SIG and it shoots lights out in both guns. Uh, I actually haven't done the accuracy, accuracy report on the SIG yet but I expect hopefully the same results as the Beretta. Again, you're gonna pay about 72, 73 bucks a brick, which is not cheap, uh, but if you want the results that I'm showing you, then you're gonna to have to spend the extra bucks. I'm out for now, guys. The next report will be the SIG 522.